Hey all, it's Jessica with Fantabulosity.com and I am making Nutter Butter Truffles today. Doesn't that sound amazing? Um, and I thought, why not turn my camera on and you guys can watch the whole process, which is not a very long process at all. Um, and you guys can just kind of watch along as I'm making them. I'm making them anyway, so might as well share in the love. So you're going to want to start out with some Nutter Butters. And they have these super cute, I see a girl running and I'm literally making truffles. <laughs> And I'm thinking, I should be running right now, so maybe I will uh, go running after I make these. Doubt it. But anyway, side note. So what you want to do is start out with Nutter Butters, and they have these super cute little boxes right now that you can pick up in the little bins towards the front of the checkouts at Walmart, and they're so easy. I love the little boxes. It makes it easier to just kind of handle. And um, So anyway, you need about 16 ounces of Nutter Butters, so that would be four boxes maybe, or a whole pack, whatever you want to do. But anyway, so you want to uh, crush, mash your Nutter Butters. You could be difficult and get out a food processor and really make it fine, but I'm a firm believer in quick and easy, and I like a plastic bag and a tool and beat the heck out of it. You hear my Christmas music playing in the background? So I've already done this some, but I have a little ways to go. I didn't want to spend 10 minutes beating this on camera. So I started it and I thought I'd finish it. Just kind of give, give you an idea. I don't even know if you can hear me while I'm talking. and pour it into your mouth. Just kidding. <laughs> I totally would. If you weren't watching. Okay. I'm using my KitchenAid mixer because it's my favorite thing ever. Okay. You just pour those in there. And then you're also going to use a pack of cream cheese. I've let mine sit out for a little while just to soften to make it easier. And I'll get my hands messy and then I'm going to have to go wash them off. But I just kind of you don't have to do this. I tear the cream cheese apart so it blends easier, but let me wipe my hands off. Okay. And you're just going to mix those two ingredients together slowly so it doesn't go crazy and fly all over your kitchen. That's why I like this thing, because I can turn it on and leave it instead of sitting there <laughs> with my own blender. Okay. My little cookie thing ready. So I have this little doohickey that it works amazing. It kind of just measures out the little round spoonfuls that I need for my truffles. Maybe my cream cheese wasn't soft enough. <laughs> it's kind of hanging out around my mixer thing. So I recommend using softened cream cheese. Very softened. So it doesn't do this. You know, I may have to switch um I know my thing I'm using is kind of like for whipping stuff. So I may have to switch out my little attachment. If this isn't going to work, I don't think it's going to work. So, I'm going to use this one. I was just totally being lazy. I thought I'd use the one that was already on it, but that's not going to work. So, switch out my little attachment. Easy as that. If you guys don't have a KitchenAid mixer, ask for one for Christmas. They're amazing. Okay, slip this one out of the way. And, ooh, she's bobbing down. Perfect, okay. So then I can kind of pick up the speed a little bit and it won't fly everywhere. What you wanna do is just have them mix really well together. Okay, I think that's good. That attachment works so much better. Totally thought I could get away with it with the other one. Just goes to show that, take that extra step. Okay, I'm gonna scoot over here so you can see me. My head's not cut off. Don't need my hammer anymore. Released all my frustration on beating it. Okay, so I get my little attachment here. 
See that? So I just scoop that a little bit, roll it into a round ball, and I'm just gonna put it on my, I just got a cookie sheet with some parchment paper, and I'm gonna make little balls out of it, little truffles. But what I'm gonna do after I get all of these measured out, I'm gonna chill them in the mi uh, chill them in the microwave. I'm gonna chill them in the refrigerator for a little bit so they can get harder and tougher because I have a plan and I want them to be hardened so they work with me a lot easier. I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna roll out all of these, the rest of them, and then I'll come back on and show you what I'm doing next. So stay tuned. Hey, I am back. So I just pulled my Nutter Butter truffles out of the refrigerator so they're nice and hard and firm. And you could easily cover these in white chocolate, melted almond bark, whatever, and um, set them out, put them in the refrigerator, let them harden a little bit, and they're good to go. However, I am hosting a milk and cookies play date for my kiddos and their friends today. And I wanna do kinda take it a notch up and make a little cute treat for them. So I'm creating little snowman, um, a little sleigh. So I made one before I turned the camera back on just to make sure that it turned out <laughs> before I went and told you I was doing it. So you can see here I made a little snowman, put him on a little graham cracker and made a sleigh out of it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Super cute, it's super fun. Um, so glad it turned out. Goes to show winging it sometimes works, right? Okay, so I'm actually gonna grab a different one because, okay. So the first thing is to make this little snowman. Grab two of your little Nutter Butter Truffles. Flatten the bottom of one of them, okay, as gently. You don't wanna squeeze it too hard because you don't want it to break open or crack it. But what you're gonna do, you can actually kind of I wish you could see, push it down a little bit on a flat surface because you want it to stand up by itself, kind of like I have here. So I just kind of mash the bottom of it a little bit. Grab a toothpick, dip the toothpick in your melted almond bark, your white chocolate, whatever, and then you're going to stick the toothpick into the top of that truffle that you just flattened on the bottom, okay? Next thing you're gonna do is take the top of the toothpick and dip it in the chocolate. What you're doing is securing the truffle onto the toothpick because when that chocolate hardens, it's going to stick to the toothpick much easier, okay? So, there's my little snowman in process. Now I will say, if you are serving these to kids, make sure you tell them or their parents or whatever to be cautious that there's a toothpick in the middle. You don't want a little, little guy biting down on the whole thing, so they just need to pull it off kind of like a kebab, okay? to eat the truffle. All right, so let's see if he's gonna stand. Can you see that? Looks like he's gonna stand. Okay, so my next step is I'm going to take a graham cracker, put a little dollop of white chocolate in the center, because what that's gonna do is act as the glue for my snowman. And you kinda gotta work quick because that chocolate hardens and it's kinda worthless after that. I mean, not worthless, I'd totally eat it, but kinda worthless to uh, work with. Now. I don't know all the tips and tricks of the trade of baking and decorating, so I don't know of a good tip to easily cover my truffles with white chocolate without making them look like a hot mess with chocolate dripping everywhere and all that jazz. So what I do is I cover in white chocolate and then quickly before the white chocolate hardens, I kind of touch it up with a little spoon or my finger or whatever, okay? So can you kind of see, I have him covered up with white chocolate. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of smooth him out a little bit, make him look like he's not having a bad hair day. Some of the chocolate may drip down and create a puddle around the bottom, and that's completely okay, because it's snowman milk, right? Okay, so before the chocolate hardens, you wanna start adding everything to decorating. I just grab a couple of little chocolate candy pieces I make a little hat with, oops, I may need to wait until this chocolate hardens some more, my goodness. Okay, so I just add that at the top. You could use just about anything. I've seen some people use all different kinds of candies to make little hats. And then I just grab two little mini chocolate chips to create the eyes. I'm gonna be brave. And I'm gonna try to do this holding it. Can y'all see, it's so bright in here. 
but I recommend doing this on a flat surface before <laughs> when you're doing it because all the teardrop is, or the, not the teardrop, the chocolate chip is pointing down so it kind of looks like he's sad. Um, so anyway, I just add two little, two little mini chocolate chips to make the eyes. Then I'm going to grab just a little orange round piece of round chocolate candy, create a nose. And I stop talking because I can't do two things at once very well. Okay. So I'll hold him up. I need that professional camera crew following me around so I can have you guys see from overhead. Okay. I'm still going to try to clean him up a little bit. Poor little guy, his little bad hair day. Okay. I mean, but he's cute, right? He can be messy. He fits in around my house. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, these pool park little things here, I'm gonna create a scarf now. So I'm gonna show you. You see here, the little pool park candy. You can use all different kinds. I've seen people use a lot of different kind of candies, but something that just kind of represents a scarf. And I found some in red and green. So I'm going to wrap it around his little neck. Now what I found is that chocolate is so not hardened. I kind of have to hold that scarf there for a little bit to kind of let it harden and stick because it has a lot of Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The candy I'm using wants to bounce back. What do they call that? I can never think when I need it. Okay, so he's sticking pretty good. His scarf is sticking pretty good. <laughs> a little, there we go. I did wash my hands, okay? So if you're coming to our play date later and you're wondering, I did wash my hands, I promise. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is add the little sleigh pieces on and I just grab a little mini candy cane for that there and they make these so hard to get into my goodness I mean that's good I wish they did that with chocolate because then I wouldn't eat as much okay so I just grabbed my little candy cane what I'm going to do is spoon up a little of the white chocolate and run the bottom of the candy cane along the bottom okay because what I'm wanting it to do is stick to the graham cracker I'll go ahead and do the other one and then I'll show you how I did that. So if you're, a, if you do videos for a living, if you're a videographer and you want to come to my house and video this stuff for me <laughs> so everybody can see what I'm doing instead of just hearing me talk pretty much. Oh my gosh, that might be so hard to get into. I'm going to have to bite it or get some scissors. I get all my kids for doing that. Oh, it's broken anyway. I get on my kids for biting their wrappers all the time. Ah. Oh, success. Okay, I should have already had those open. Today. Okay, so I'm going to get another spoonful of chocolate, run the bottom of the candy cane along it to kind of get some food glue, I'll call it. Whoa, Mr. Snowman is close to the edge on this one. I barely made it. Okay, so there we go. There he is. He's a little crooked, but that's okay. Not every snowman is alike, right? Do you like that? Is it super cute? So, like I told you, I can't de decorate to save my life, but I can have fun with it, and I think it works. So, I think the little kiddos at the play date are going to love it. Just remember, there's a toothpick in the middle, so you don't want anybody biting down and poking the heck out of the roof of the mouth. So, anyway, that's it, guys. I think I may kind of play around with the little nut or butter truffles some more and see what else I can create. Maybe a little ornament or a Santa hat or something. So if I do that, I'll be sure to share that too. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And please, as always, leave a comment below. Email me at jessica at fantabulosity.com if you have any questions or you just want to chat. I love that. So I will see you all soon. Bye.